Okay, so welcome back. Here's where we left off. We have our board. Uh, if we make a match, uh, they destroy. We've got a little particle effect. Everything collapses. And if we make a match of four, uh, we have a special row or column bomb that gets created depending on which direction we swiped to make that match. Uh, now, today, what we're going to look at is how to make a color bomb. So in Candy Crush, when you get a match of five, um, the piece that you moved into the five turns into a color bomb. And then when you swap that with any other piece, you destroy every piece on the board of that color. So for example, if this were a color bomb here, and I swapped it with this orange one, I destroy all the orange pieces. If I swapped it with this kind of tealy blue one, I destroy all the tealy blue pieces. So we're going to take a look at creating that mechanic today. And then next time, we're going to implement it whenever we have a match of five. Although, if you paid really close attention to our generating row and column bombs, you probably would be able to do that part on your own. But we will give it a try here. So let's get started. The first place we're going to be working in today is in the find matches script. So the method that we're making doesn't have to go and find matches, but it's where we have all of our logic for our other bombs anyway. So we might as well just do our logic in there. So I'm going to wait for that to open up, and then we'll get started. OK, so welcome back. So I'm inside the find matches script, and I'm going to add a new method here for finding all the pieces of a certain color. So it just makes sense to me to put this near the get column and get row pieces. Um, this isn't going to be a list, though, because I don't need to add it to a list of other matched pieces. Instead, it's just going to be a void. It's just going to go through, uh, given a certain color, to find every other piece of that color and turn that piece to be is matched. So we're going to call this a public because we're going to need to access it from another uh, class. And this is a void because it's not going to return anything, unlike the get column and get row pieces. And I'm going to say, uh, We'll call this match pieces of color. And then we're going to need to pass in a parameter here because we need to know which color we're matching. So I'm going to pass it in as a string, and I'm going to call that string color. So whenever you, in our game right now, um, in here, if we take a look at our prefabs, at our dark green dot, we have what kind of dot it is saved in the tag. So we're using Unity's tag system versus using a an enumerator or um, a variable inside this object. And that tag is saved as a string. So we're going to be passing in that string here into this method. So I'm going to use my double for loops that should be pretty familiar to you guys by now. So I'm going to say for int i is 0, i is less than board.width i plus plus. And then I'm going to do another for loop inside of that for the rows. So for i is 0, uh, i is less than board.height, i++. Plus plus. And then in here is where I'm going to check. Oop, this should be j, sorry. The second for loop is j, not i. What am I doing? OK, that's better. All right, so now I want to check to see, so check if that piece exists. Because we could have a situation where this gets called right after a piece was destroyed and before one was brought in to replace it. So we're going to say if board.all dots, which is where we're saving all of our dots, and we want to get the ij version of it, is not equal to null, meaning if it exists. Then we want to uh, check the tag on that dot. So if board dot all dots uh, i comma j dot tag is equal to color, um, and we could do compare tag here. Technically, compare tag is a little faster, but I like doing the double equals. Um, OK, so we're checking to see the tag on that dot. And if it's the right color, then we're going to set that dot to be matched. So we'll do board dot all dots ij. And this is the game object. If we want to set it to be matched, we have to access the dot script on it. So dot get 
component, and the component we want to get is the dot script dot is matched is true. Uh, okay, so this little method here is going to check all of our width and height, uh, and if that piece exists in that place, it's going to check to see what the tag of that piece is, and if the tag is equal to the color that we passed in, then it's going to set that piece to be matched. Okay, so now I'm going to save this and pop over to the dot script. So, <clears throat> in the dot script here, um, I want to use this check move coroutine, and here is where I'm going to check to see uh, if I swapped with a piece, if either the piece I'm using right now or the other piece is a color bomb. But in order to do that, I need to add some logic to my um, to my global variables here. So might as well put it in the power up stuff. So right above is column bomb. I'm going to say public bool is color bomb. And I have a game object for the row arrow and the column arrow. Might as well make a game object for game object, um, the color bomb. Uh, okay, cool. Now, I'm going to leverage uh, a debug method that we used before. So we use this uh, private void on mouse over, and then if we hit the right mouse button, we changed is row bomb to true. This time, I'm going to make is column, or is color bomb true. And instead of calling this an arrow, I'm going to call this a color and instead of instantiating the row arrow, I'm going to instantiate the color bomb. And instead of this being arrow.parent, it's going to be color.parent. So I'm still using this debug method that I have here. If I right click over something, I can turn it into a color bomb. We'll replace this later with the actual logic to make a match 5 create a color bomb, but for now we're good. Uh, okay, so now. In the check move coroutine, I'm going to split this up a little bit. Well, actually, I can do it right here. So what I want to do is I want to, at this point, after I've swapped two places, I want to check to see if the current dot or if the other dot is a color bomb and then do something special. So first, I want to say if uh, this dot, or actually, no, we'll just do if is color bomb, then this piece is a color bomb. And the other piece is the color to destroy. Uh, else if, so we want to check it to see if the other piece is a color bomb now. So else if other dot, or other dot dot get component, because we're saving it as game object, we have to get the dot component. Dot dot is color bomb. So the other piece is a color bomb, and this piece has the color to destroy. Um, okay, so we're going to check to see if, if the piece that we're currently moving is a color bomb, then we're going to destroy all the colors of the other piece. And if the other piece is a color bomb, then we're going to destroy all the colors of this piece. So to do that, we have to call in our find matches method. So find our find matches class, and then in there we need to do get or sorry not get match pieces of color, and the color we want to use since it's the other piece is going to be other dot dot tag and semicolon to end my thought. Okay, and then in this other piece here, we're going to do find matches dot match pieces of color. And we want to match it this dot game object dot tag. The this is unnecessary, which is why Visual Studio grays it out like this. But I like to do it because it makes it more readable. If anybody else were to come in and try to read my code, this would make it a little more um, reader friendly. Now the other thing we have to do, so this matches, or this takes all of the pieces that are of this color and sets them to is matched. So I don't have to do this, but I think it makes sense just for um, redundancy sake is I'm going to say um, is matched is true and then uh, here I'm going to say is matched 
is true. I don't need to do this because the find matches method should be doing it for me. When it finds everything of every color, it should find this one too, but I like to do it just to make sure. Um, okay, so now let's go into Unity. I made a uh, special little icon for the color bomb. Um, I didn't record myself making it, so I'll throw it up on the uh, um, repository that I've been putting all of my art in. So I'm just going to go to the art folder here, and I have mine saved to the desktop. And I'll pull in my rainbowbomb.png, and I'll choose this. Now my dot I have set to 768 pixels per unit, so I'll do the same thing for the rainbow bomb, 768. And I'm going to generate mip maps, so it is going to look better on smaller displays. And I'll click apply. I need to turn this into an actual object though, so I'm going to pull it into the scene. And this changes it to rainbow bomb. Now again, I want this to appear above the pieces, so just like I did with the column arrow, if you look here at the column arrow, near, um, I set its order and layer to be 1. I'm going to take the rainbow bomb and set its order and layer to be 2. So it's going to appear above the normal dot. Um, and then I will drag this into my prefabs folder. Once I've done that, you can see it turns like a blue text. That means I've saved it as prefab, and I can delete it from the scene. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now, I need to fill in a few things here. So if I look back at my dot script, I created a game object for the color bomb. So now I need to go to everything that has the dot script on it. So for me, that's my dark green dot, my green dot, my indigo, my orange, my red, my salmon, my teal, and my yellow. Make sure you don't grab anything that is, doesn't have the dot script. And I'm going to go to where color bomb is, and I'm going to pull rainbow bomb onto there. All right, cool. So I should be able to test this out now. And let's give it a play and let's try it out. It's very possible I made some mistakes because I did a lot of coding there without checking stuff. So I'm going to arrow over a piece. I'm going to right click and I turned it into a color bomb. Now, if everything works the way it should, if I swap this with the orange piece, all of the other orange pieces should go away. So let's try that. Ta-da! Cool. So let's try it again. Let's try it with, uh, let's make this blue one. And now instead of swiping the color bomb itself, let's swipe this kind of tealy color with that. And then all the tealy pieces should go away. Ta-da! All right, cool. Oh, except the, the rainbow bomb didn't go away. So what did I do? Oh. I set that piece to be matched. I have to do, um, I have to make the other dot matched in that case because the other dot's the color bomb and I want the color bomb to go away. So other dot, dot get component and the component I want to get is the dot, dot is matched, is true. So let me save this. I will pop back into Unity. Uh, when it's done thinking there, I will hit play. Okay, and now I've got my pieces sliding in. I'm gonna, first of all, I wanna make sure that, sweet, still working. Always good when things still work. Sweet, still working. Okay, so I'm going to make this a color bomb and I'm gonna swipe it with the kind of light blue piece. So then all of the other light blue pieces here, here, and here should go away. Now, if you'll notice, it's not going to chain a bomb but that's okay, we'll address chaining bombs later. But if I swipe it, ta-da! Now in the actual Candy Crush, like I said, this whole column would have gone because I was swiping with the color of a column bomb. Um, we will address chaining bombs very relatively soon. Um, I'm not quite sure when we'll get to it, but we'll get to it relatively soon. So the next thing we have to do is make it so that when we have a match five, that that's when we have the color bomb generate rather than just having it generate whenever I right click somewhere. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Uh, if you have any other mechanics that you'd like to see. Um, so there've been a lot of requests recently. So like I added that direction being what decides which arrow, way this arrow goes based on some people requesting that. Um, some people requested the gelatin. So I added that to my schedule. Um, 
so yeah, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to leave them below. Um, you can follow me on Twitter to find out exactly when I post new videos. And have yourself a wonderful day wherever you are. Bye.